start with an opening statement, then we'll go to questions. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, without him, I wouldn't be here. I have this opportunity and uh, so blessed to be a part of this uh, terrific university and athletic department and um, so proud of our guys. And, uh, you know, secondly, our fans were incredible, right? I mean, we always say that, you know, home court advantage gives you a plus 10. They, they might have been plus 20 tonight. You know, and uh, it was it was incredible. And one of the things that I said leading up to this is that, you know, that kind of energy that they brought tonight, um, I, I want them to bring that because they love us and not because of the opponent that we're playing. And so on Saturday when we play Texas Tech, if they love us, we're going to get that same energy, right? Not because of the opponent that we're playing against. And that, that, that was the thing for my message. And... Um, you know, all the credit to, to Kansas. I mean, Jalen Wilson was incredible. Uh, they, they're an incredible basketball team and program and coach self. And, uh, but tonight, we, we made one more play than they did. And um, like I told the guys in the locker room, we only got one win tonight. Okay? And so now we have to prepare, do what we have to do tonight, the next right thing, so that we can prepare to prepare to win the next one. Thank you. Coach, did, did you draw up that, the alley-oop? I mean, it was about well, as well executed as you possibly could have. Um, it is something that we run, yes. And it's what we were looking for. I, I didn't necessarily think he was going to catch it and dunk it, but we wanted to isolate him on the side of the floor, and we knew that they would be on top of him. What exactly did KU do to kind of get back into the game and give you guys so much trouble through the second half? They hooped. You know, I think they settled down, and, and they got really good players on that side, you know, and they do a really good job. Uh, I mean, I, th I think every one of their games, except for the West Virginia game, has come down to one possession, and they've been able to win them. And it's like they've been in those kind of games and those environments before. So, I mean, we didn't expect this thing to um, – we did not we, – we expected a one-possession game. What does it say about Marquise tonight that – he doesn't have the best offensive scoring night, but he gets the steal at the end and gets the go-ahead bucket and just stays in the game long enough and then throws the lob at the end. Yeah, I mean, seven assists with three turnovers. Um, he didn't press. He, uh, he guarded um, multiple times. He was guarding a 6'8", six, 6'7", six, guy in the post and just fighting and, you know, four steals. Uh, Keese is a winner, man, and he's, he's growing as a as a leader right and um today he was a really good basketball player out there even though the stat sheets didn't say then at the end of regulation it felt like it was jalen wilson keontae johnson going head to head on every possession just i mean talk about both of those guys games a little bit it was i mean you know uh, a guy at baylor named bill peterson a terrific coach and he would tell me he said jerome you know uh coach is a good coach when he gets his best players the most shots right and uh, as you can see uh, Jalen got 25 shots and and Keontae got 17 and that's just I mean this it's not rocket science man them dudes uh, they can hoop and we just got to put them in space where they have a chance and um, they were both really good tonight and then last question for me is there any kind of adjustments when, um, especially in the second half, there seems to be a lot of whistles and, and a lot of free throws? Is that kind of hard to adjust to? And then what do you adjust if you make any adjustments? Uh, we just try to guard without fouling, man. And, you know, I think both teams tried to do it, and both teams got whistled for stuff. Coach, as, as a follow-up to last news conference, the mecca of basketball, 6 o'clock tonight. First time that a lot of people have probably seen Kansas State play basketball this season. What would you like America to know about this team? That they love each other and they play with joy. And, um, and they're, they're, they are terrific young men, right, to be around and to live life with. Um, and this is not an anomaly, right? This is who we are going to be moving forward. And uh, every one of them has bought into what it takes to not just be a good team, but to be a great program. And uh, so they, they're just a blast to be around. And um, 
I mean, you saw that crowd tonight, and I don't know about the Mecca, right? I mean, that's kind of a big Mecca, but I don't know there was a better college environment in America, and every kid in the country should want to play in front of those fans. Big night from Desi. Is that becoming more important as teams try to take away Keontae and Marquise more and more? Yeah, every night somebody has to step up, but I, I've said this from the very, Desi Seals is a winner, right? He, he, Desi's a winner. He's won, he won in high school, everywhere he's been, he's won. Today he is rolling, right? And I asked him in a timeout, I said, Des, what you want me to run for you? And he says, nothing. I'm going to defend and rebound, do my thing, and, and I get mine, coach. Just keep keep going. Like he was saying, SOS, I mean, you know, SOS for um, run the same play for Keontae. You know, I mean, this dude just cares about winning. And uh, today, to help us win, he had to make shots. You know, in the next game, it might be something different. But he, he's a really good basketball player, but he, he's, he's a, the, the ultimate winner. With Ish, you got two timely threes, uh, key steal at the end. Does it seem like he's kind of got a knack for the critical play right now? Uh, he's he's – He's growing as a player, man. I think the thing he and we were most proud of was him diving on the floor for that loose ball at the end, right? I mean, uh, th there was a, during our shark week, and I mean this as a compliment, okay? So during our shark week, we're running sprints. You got to make it at a certain time. And everybody dives to try and make it before the horn sounds except for him. And I mean, I just called him out. I said, dude. Everybody on every one of your teammates just dove to try and make this time and you didn't right so there was a time he didn't that wouldn't have been a part of him and and to see that growth tonight like caring about his brothers so much and loving his teammates to sacrifice his body like that that that's as a coach that that really is what makes your heart swell Kevin McCuller no points tonight how'd you stop him uh, I don't know if we stopped him I, I you know I I think sometimes kids have off nights, and you know, thankfully had an off night. Coach, can you talk about your decision to find why you did it, and what it felt like? What it um, well, I was really disappointed in um, the introduction when our our students started chanting the the FKU chant. Um, it's like crap. I hadn't I hadn't gotten it across yet, you know, and uh, there's work to be done and. And then at the end of the game, when they were on the, the floor and, and they started chanting it again, you know, I, I just, I really want them to understand that, um, you know, we don't, we don't have to degrade the other team. We can dislike them all we want, but, but let's, let's, let's cheer for us. Let's just, let America hear Kansas State and not hear the other name, whoever, you know what I mean? And so um, that, that, that's all that's about. I, I, I believe, like, we can have a terrific culture here uh, because of the passion of our fans. And, you know, somebody has to say it, right? We just can't like, oh, that's kids to be kids. That's not, somebody has to say it. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I think if we're losing, then maybe my voice doesn't carry as much weight, but thankfully God's put us on, this, given us this platform. We're winning. It's his platform, and, and I can speak on some of those things because this is a special place, and man, happiness, you know? I mean, this, this is a really special place, and um, I want the country to know how special it is not be known for the dumb chant. Bill Self said, mentioned that, mentioned your name as a possible Big 12 player or coach of the year and national coach of the year. He thinks that you should be in that discussion at the end of the year. What do you think about those words from Bill Self? Well, anytime Bill Self gives you a compliment, it's a great thing because he's, he's the best, right? Like, uh, for a while, I thought Billy Donovan was the best when he's in Florida. I mean, the whole package, recruiting, coaching, player development, relationship, and, uh, you know, Bill's the best. Like, I mean, you can spend five minutes with him, you leave, and you think he's your best friend, right? I mean, he's, he's – and so anytime he gives you a compliment, that's great. But, you know, um, this – let's wait till the end of the season. We'll talk about that. And uh, Scott won it three times, and every time he said it was a staff award. And so it, it's not me. It's, it's our staff. I have a great staff. Rodney Perry did an unbelievable job with the scout. And uh, the defensive end of things, Coach Bourne and Coach Urich and Coach Jareem, they, they – they, I mean, I know they scored a lot of points, but – 
you know, I mean, we, we had a game plan going in that, that, that bothered them for a while. And so that, that helped us. So I, I just got a terrific staff, and that's what that's about. And then it seemed like in the second half, you were, uh, it seemed like Keontae was trying to get fed down low a lot. Was there a game plan with that? Yeah, we was just trying to get him the ball in a position where he could score, you know. And, um, you know, this, is, this was a paint point game. Right, that, that's what was going to come down to paint points and free throws, and we knew that going in. We had to keep them out of the paint, and we had to get to the paint. And so the closer we could get him the ball to the paint, played in our favor. Was there a way in which you mitigated the pick and roll, especially with Adams? Well, him getting in foul trouble really helped us, you know. And uh, um, it was so loud that our guys said, like, they were making the calls, but they couldn't call it, and you know. And so, you know, I. They, they do a really good job in that middle pick and roll. Sometimes they set it, sometimes they slip it, sometimes they set it lower than, you know, so it, you have to keep changing up and really have great communication. And when it's so loud, it's hard for the guys to communicate. Look at that athleticism. Uh, Jeremy, can you walk us through how you decided to manage Keontae's minutes when he did run into foul trouble tonight? Um, well, we got him out, and then we tried to find offensive possessions that we could put him back in for. And um, so, so it's just like I just, we got somebody on the bench who's saying in my ear, A, hey, do we want to get him in now when we're going to offense? And based on the time and the score, it determined whether I was putting him at the end. I thought the end of the first half, getting him in for that last possession was huge. And so it, it was the staff. They were, you know, giving me information on what do we we didn't want him to get his third foul. And so th that that was important to us. I didn't want him to say the FKU chant. <laughs> that that's all that was about. Coach, Marquise told a story about how before you were hired, he sent a text message to Gene Taylor that he wanted you to be the head coach. Did you know that story? And what's that mean to you for someone that really didn't know you to go out of his way to do that? Um, Gene Taylor told me the story um, after I got hired, a little later on when Keith was here, uh, when, when Keith decided he was staying and stuff. And uh, man, it means a lot for a guy, I mean, I remember uh, he thought it was my scout when we played him here at K-State. And he, because I don't think he played one of the times that we played them when I was at Baylor. And, but I know he played when we played here. And, but I, you know, I did the defense, so I was involved in every scout there. And so after the game, when we won, he, we was going through the line, having the players, he says, I knew it was your scout, <laughs> you know, and, and it wasn't, but it was really cool that he, that he acknowledged it, right? And so getting here and knowing that I was one of the names, so the name that he sent to Gene, uh, that, that means a lot, right? And I, I mean, I, I love the young fellow, man. He's, that, that's my arrow. And I know that you have a lot of goals, winning a Big 12 title, winning a national title, but you know, you guys have had a ton of success earlier this season. What's it like to kind of be able to fulfill some of the goals that you guys have maybe established this season with Marquise and all the other kids that you've brought in? It is really cool for our fans, right? It's it's really cool um, to see the guys. We always tell them hard work pays off, and for them to ex experience that. But um, our thing, we got to do the next right thing, and so that's kind of where our mindset is. Coach, uh, talking about doing the next right thing, uh, Marquise didn't have his best shooting night, but then he comes away with the strip, steal, and layup, and then, of course, the pass to Keontae. What does it say about him that even when he's having an off night, he could still come in with big moments and big plays? Yeah, leadership is his leadership, right? He, he, didn't, he doesn't allow um, – he's getting really good at not allowing things to rattle him, right? I actually thought he was going to bury that three on the kickout, and when he shot it, I was like, ball game. And then he missed it, and I thought it would bother him. And he turned around and made another really good play. And, and there have been times this year where he lets, you know, one play where it get frustrated him, so he makes a bad play the next one. And he's getting better at that. So he's growing as a point guard and um, growing as a leader. And what did you think about how he played in his matchup against uh, Harris tonight? Well, we really didn't have him on Harris that much. 
you know, that was like, um, he probably guarded Grady Dick more than he guarded Harris, mm -hmm. and, and he did a great job mm -hmm. with that. Well, if I tell you, they're going to know next time. <laughs> Maybe mentality going into the play or something? We're just was trying to keep the ball out the paint, man. Anything else for Coach? Appreciate everybody. Hey, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Coach.